Hi, everyone. It's Fiona here from FionaMarks.com. And today I'm beginning uh, the process of sharing with you my final paper for the fourth year of the Asheville Vedic Astrology Apprenticeship Program. And this paper is up on my blog. So I know many of you have already read it and I've had some conversations uh, with you as you guys have come for readings and reflected things from that paper. But I wanted to take the opportunity to share it with you more because um, one of the challenges for me about the paper is keeping it to 10,000 words. I think other apprentices don't have that challenge, but I always have more to say rather than less. So I'm um, indulging myself by recording the videos, meaning that I can say as much or as little as I like. So to get that process started, um, I wanted to share with you Prince Harry's chart. So this video, we're just going to go over the elements that are making up that chart. And then one by one, we'll have videos that go through each house, just like the blog post does. Okay, so let's begin by sharing the screen. Okay, so this is Prince Harry's chart. And it's represented here in the Kala software. Um, and we're, I'm just going to walk you through everything that's here on the screen a little bit, um, which is kind of my layout, the way I have it. Um, and also, and more importantly, and to begin with, Prince Harry's actual chart. So let's begin in this top left corner with the big yellow square. This is a representation of the sky. And in this style, it is the sky that stays still. So we're going to start up here in that second box on the top row where you can see AR for Aries. Um, right next door, moving clockwise, you can see Taurus and then Gemini. And if you keep going clockwise down the hill to Cancer, Leo and Virgo, and then moving across Libra, Scorpio and Sagittarius, and coming up for Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. So in this style of representation, it's the sky that stays still. That's the first thing. The second thing is what are these letters randomly dotted around? So nothing in Aries, but in Taurus, we can see that we've got MO for moon. So these letters represent the planets. And we have RA for Rahu, which is an eclipse point. And uh, we're going to talk about that, obviously, in Prince Harry's chart. Now, this is not a planet that you can see with your eyes in the sky, uh, but it represents where the, from our perspective, the path of the sun and the path of the moon intersect. Then when we move over, Gemini, nothing in Gemini, nor Cancer, nor Leo. But in Virgo, we have ME for Mercury and SU for Sun. Then in Libra, VE for Venus, and in Scorpio, SA for Saturn, and KE for K2. So this is the partner eclipse point with Rahu, and you can see that they're always 180 degrees away from each other, and they're always exactly the same degree as each other. And then in Sagittarius, we have MA for Mars, bringing us finally to Capricorn, where we have JU for Jupiter. So now we know two things about Prince Harry's chart. One is uh, the night sky where the zodiac was, and we know where the planets were in those zodiac signs. And the final thing that we want to know is where was Prince Harry on the planet Earth when he was born, and that is marked by this diagonal line, in this case in Capricorn, um, marking the degrees and minutes of the eastern horizon so Capricorn was the zodiac star sign that was rising on the eastern horizon at this birth time and from this location on planet earth we get the houses so you'll notice Capricorn has an orange number one next to it and Aquarius number two same thing moving clockwise three four and all the way around the orange numbers are counting the houses of this person's chart. So um, as you can tell on the blog already, the essay is written house by house. So that was the assignment was to be disciplined and examine in detail those 
um, indicators that are repeating in each particular house because they bring, bring a different flavor to each different house depending on which indicators are repeating. Um, and so, and other things to share in this kind of introductory overview session is just a little bit more about the layout here. I like to have this box open in the middle of the chart, which tells you a little bit about, it's got each planet, and then it's got the dignity in the Rashi chart, which you can see it's referring to Rashi there. And it's got the Baladi of Ashta and the Jagradadi of Ashta. So this can be really helpful when you are calculating the house prosperity and annihilation. That's why it's handy to have that one up. And then underneath the big yellow chart, these are standard in the color views. You can't move those around. Um, in the bottom left is the Vimshatari Dasha timing system. And uh, that is referred to in the blog. So we'll probably will cover some of that in the video. Um, but all of these ones, most of these ones on the right side are personal choice. So every astrologer that you talk to is going to have their own setup for, for what they like to have. Um, the only exception to that is right here where I actually have my video. I don't know whether you can see that there, but it, it gives you um, details about each of the planets, um, their degrees, what sign they're in, their dignity, the nakshatras, and it keeps going along there. So there's plenty of data there. Yeah. Um, but of the things that we can choose to put on Kala, um, underneath that fixed square, I like to have this one as my rotating um, various charts. Uh, this is the transits of the sky right now as we watch Saturn just, 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 just about to get to Aquarius. But uh, when you want to examine the, the various Varga charts, I find this a handy little parking spot for all of my various charts that I want to look at for a little bit more nuance. Underneath that moving uh, chart screen, I like to have the Shadbala table. Uh, so this tells me all about the Shadbala for each planet. It gives me line by line a total of the different balas and what percentage that equals because each planet requires a different amount of each bala, as you remember. Um, and then it gives me an overall total score a percentage of required score and a rank as to which one is the strongest and which one is the weakest. So I really enjoy and find this very useful. Then I like to have the dignities in the Vargas chart because um, it gives me a bit of a rundown as I look how the moon is going or how Mercury is going, look at how Jupiter is going. It gives me a little feel for how deep that dignity goes. So for example, with Jupiter is debilitated. Sometimes when Jupiter is debilitated, it's only debilitated in the Rashi and it's performing very well everywhere else. Um, however, in this case, you can see that it's a pretty solid debilitation through the first four um, and exaltation and, and a bit of mixed after that. So it gives me a bit more feeling of how true that uh, dignity is in the Rashi, how consistent that's going to be throughout the charts. Of course, if you actually want to in any way understand that Varga chart, you need to, to come here and have a look at that chart and where the placement is and what's really going on. So this little box here, the little table, I like as a snapshot, but you can't um, draw too many conclusions without going to have a look at the detail. Then I really love to have, you guys know how much I enjoy reading the Lajatadi Avashtas. So I like to have the Rashi's Avashtas here. Um, you, I'm on the old version of Kala. So you guys might have a table at the bottom here that adds up the negative and the positive. But uh, for those of us on the old version, you can see that it takes the total Lajatadi Avashta score. And that's exactly the same as these scores here for each planet and then it calculates um, the support and the attacking that comes from various planetary aspects so I find that really helpful and then I also really enjoy using the yogas calculated so that I can tell um, 
I can tell my Ishtar and Kashta for each of the planets. I can also see this uh, Shubra Shubra, which is like auspiciousness uh, in previous experience, so how well we've used this planet until this place that we arrived right now. So that gives me a bit of a feel for the planets. But most importantly, um, the calculation of the yoga score lets me know if I'm going to have a look at any of these core yogas. It lets me know um, whether the, if the core yoga is a positive yoga, how much goodness can, can these planets really give and produce from that yoga? If the yoga is a negative yoga producing negative results, how much damage can that yoga create? So that gives me nuance again around how the planet's performing. So there you have it. Uh, this is the layout that I like to use for Carla. And this is an overview of Harry's chart. So feel free to refer back to this as we go through each house and look in more detail at Prince Harry's chart. And you can begin to see how all of those things that we learned on the Asheville Vedic Astrology Apprenticeship Program, how to apply them in a practical, meaningful way. So I look forward to you in the upcoming videos. Bye.